In June 2018, the latest revision of the International Classification of Diseases, ICD-11, was released by the World Health Organization. For the first time, the ICD system has included gaming disorder as one of its uh, diagnoses. There has, you will appreciate, been, in recent years, increasing concern expressed by members of the community and also by many gamers themselves on the excessive use of uh, online games and the fact that it seemed that in many people an addictive disorder was developing. This is the era of the internet and over the last 20 years the internet has been used increasingly for work and educational purposes and also for recreational and social reasons. One cannot underestimate the benefits uh, from the internet for our everyday life. But correspondingly, it is a powerful tool which, when applied to gaming, can cause a lot of people uh, considerable harm. Gaming disorder has therefore been included in ICD-11 and it follows the inclusion as a provisional diagnosis, internet gaming disorder, in the American Psychiatric Association's Di um, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, known universally as DSM-5 and which was published in 2013. There is evidence that certain forms of uh, internet activity and in particular uh, online gaming can become addictive. Particularly prominent are the multiplayer games, but also single player games uh, such as first, shooting, first person shooting games uh, have addictive potential. In this presentation I will be describing some of the central features of gaming disorder, focusing on online gaming. But I do want to say that for most people, gaming online is fun. It's a uh, social and recreational activity. But as with substances, some people can be involved to excess and some people will develop an addictive disorder. The reasons why people get into online gaming are several fold. The primary driver, uh, apart from fun, is that the person uh, seeks a sense of uh, belonging to a social group and seeks uh, a level of status within their peers. When gaming uh, continues, uh, it becomes a more and more uh, encompassing area of activity to the extent that other aspects of life are squeezed out. As I said, gaming disorder is a new disorder in ICD-11. Uh, um, it is described as predominantly online or predominantly offline. It has certain central features. The first is impaired control over the extent of gaming. That means that uh, the gamers affected um, have uh, less control over when they start gaming, the amount of time that they devote to gaming, and also have difficulties in ceasing a gaming session. The impaired control can mean that the amount of time devoted to gaming can increase from an hour or two a day 
to six to eight hours a day, to eight to 10 hours a day, to 14, 16 hours a day. And there have been uh, well uh, described uh, instances of young people playing online games for 48 hours or more at a time. Online gamers can become deeply immersed in the game. Uh, uh, they have a sense of uh, uh, timelessness. They have a, a, a sense of almost uh, serenity. This complete absorption in this activity is known by uh, many behavioral psychologists as flow. And immersion itself seems to be one of the central features of gaming disorder. The second feature of gaming disorder is that it takes an increasing priority in a person's life. Other activities which used to be engaged in and uh, enjoyed and other responsibilities are pushed to one side in favour of playing online games to the extent that online gaming can become the central focus in that person's life. The third feature of gaming disorder is that gaming continues despite the occurrence of adverse consequences. So even if um, school or college performance is failing, even though uh, a person's uh, non-gaming friends uh, disappear from their life. Gaming persists as a central activity despite these consequences. These central features of gaming disorder have analogies in the definitions of substance dependence. Substance dependence also includes tolerance and withdrawal the physiological features. And there's been a lot of debate as to whether uh, gaming disorder uh, manifests a tolerance uh, equivalent to that on, of, on a, a substance and whether withdrawal symptoms occur. There's no doubt that uh, people spend an increasing amount of time gaming and that they seek more and more challenging games. Whether that equates to tolerance is something which is being uh, debated and investigated at the present time. We also know that when a person's gaming is suddenly uh, ceases or is stopped, they develop uh, uh, dysphoria, um, irritability, and there have been some reported cases of uh, gamers becoming violent in that circumstance. Again, whether this represents a withdrawal syndrome, as we see in substance dependence, uh, is a matter for further investigation. But neither tolerance uh, or withdrawal are included at the present time as central features of gaming disorder in ICD-11. The feature which seems to be very uh, unique for gaming is that immersion. We need to know more about the phenomenon of immersion and uh, flow to identify whether they should be included as central features of gaming disorder. At the moment they're not, but this is an area of very active research, as many of you will appreciate. Who develops gaming disorder? It's predominantly a disorder of young men in their mid to late teens and twenties. In many studies, the male to female ratio is 10 to 1. Are there underlying conditions which predispose a person to gaming disorder? 
Well, yes, there are. Um, we know that um, uh, people who have uh, social anxiety disorder, um, certain forms of depression, ADHD, are, and also uh, autism spectrum disorder, including Asperger's, are more at risk of developing gaming disorder than uh, people without those conditions. We also know that uh, young people who uh, are not meeting expectations for academic su success, for example, um, uh, are more at risk of gaming disorder. And also uh, where there is significant instability in the parental relationship. But it would be wrong to think that everybody who develops gaming disorder uh, has necessarily to have a predisposing or underlying condition. Many people who enjoy gaming persist with it. The amount of time devoted to it increases as the weeks and months go by and they slip into a gaming disorder just as people using certain substances can slip into an addiction on that substance. The consequences of gaming disorder are increasingly recognised and they include um, problems with uh, academic uh, work, problems in uh, turning up for work on time uh, and doing a, a job of work uh, diligently. They include um, removing uh, themselves from uh, family events and even family occasions such as lunch and dinner, uh, distancing themselves from non-gaming friends in favour of playing games repeatedly. Other problems relate to the amount of time that people spend gaming, often in their bedroom. Uh, there is reduced sunlight exposure, low vitamin D levels, and also uh, the development of uh, osteopenia, resulting in brittle bones and uh, fractures. In addition, uh, people with gaming disorder can become underweight because of lack of food um, or overweight because they're constantly drinking high calorie soft drinks um, when they are gaming. We also know that um, uh, measures of physical fitness and muscle strength indicate that these are uh, significantly impaired. Finally, in terms of problems, we need to recognise that thrombosis can occur in leg and pelvic veins and embolism uh, is recognised uh, as uh, uh, having occurred <coughs> uh, producing cardiac arrest uh, by uh, lodging in the pulmonary arteries. The treatment of gaming <coughs> disorder needs to be carefully worked out. Since the internet is such a universal or near universal activity, one cannot just uh, ban uh, access to the internet. Um, it is so essential for so many aspects of everyday life. There is debate at the moment as to whether there should be selective use of the internet, whereby <coughs> um, access to gaming sites is uh, prevented, uh, but access to the internet for um, work or educational purposes is permitted. Some authorities uh, view uh, a goal of moderated uh, internet uh, gaming use as being achievable, um, and you will appreciate there is a considerable debate at the moment. 
In terms of the <coughs> therapies which can be uh, uh, offered for gaming disorder, the mainstay uh, is cognitive behaviour therapy, which is adapted uh, for uh, gaming situations. Um, and uh, the greatest evidence base that we have at the moment um, is for cognitive uh, behaviour therapy as the most effective uh, psychological intervention that we have. Uh, there are studies being conducted on uh, Q exposure response prevention therapy. Self-help groups have been formed, such as uh, Gamers Anonymous or Internet Addicts Anonymous. And in certain countries, there are residential camps uh, where gamers will reside uh, for periods of three to six months and uh, have um, uh, uh, forced um, non-access to the internet um, and instead engage in physical and other pursuits. I should say that the latter approach, which is popular in some countries of the world, uh, does not have an evidence base. The <clears throat> possibility of pharmacological treatments for gaming disorder um, is also um, an important area of investigation currently, but the evidence base is fairly minimal. Now, Trexone is being uh, trialled as <clears throat> a way of uh, suppressing the driving force for uh, playing online games in a similar way that it has been trialled uh, and then proven of value for alcohol dependence and certain other substance use disorders. Otherwise, pharmacological treatment is devoted at the present time to the any underlying mental health disorders and of course um, it may be required for uh, certain uh, physical health consequences. As ever prevention of gaming disorder is important. Many countries have recommendations for the amount of uh, time that uh, children and young people should spend uh, playing games either individual ones or in uh, uh, groups. Um, again, we don't have good evidence on what are appropriate times and the uh, approaches to uh, prevention um, uh, are still very much in the experimental stage. In some countries, um, people playing online games are required uh, to have their gaming monitored and uh, in certain jurisdictions uh, after four hours uh, of a gaming session access to the internet is uh, prevented. Uh, these uh, approaches are arguably not uh, ones which could be introduced into uh, a liberal Western uh, democracy, um, but they show the extent to which uh, there is concern uh, in so many countries around the world. The inclusion of gaming disorder in ICD-11, following its earlier inclusion as a provisional disorder in DSM-5, is therefore very timely. It is crucial for clear diagnostic guidelines to be made available, for the diagnosis to be made, for health professionals and those in the educational system to be able to communicate accurately their conclusions about individual patients and also uh, to provide a basis for developing uh, the, <coughs> the evidence base through research. For these reasons, the inclusion of gaming disorder, I would suggest, in ICD-11 is something to be welcomed. Thank you.